Hello and welcome to the introduction for this course. What are the course requirements? You need a computer and internet connection to follow along with this course. Who is this course for? This course is for anyone who wants to learn something new. What is the course format? The format of the course is video. Hello and welcome to this video. What is SQL Server? SQL Server is a relational database management system developed by Microsoft. As a database server, it is a software product with the primary function of storing and retrieving data as requested by other software applications which may either run on the same computer or on another computer across a network or the internet. SQL Server exclusively used to only run on a Windows based environment but for the past few years Microsoft has made it also available to run on a Linux based environment. The current version of SQL Server as of the time I'm recording this video is SQL Server 2019. In most production environments, SQL Server will be installed normally on a dedicated machine and then users would log into that machine remotely from their own computer to access the databases that they want to use. You can also install SQL Server locally on your own computer. SQL Server can be used for different purposes apart from as a database server. Every server installation of SQL is referred to as an instance. So a single instance is a single installation of SQL Server, which can hold many individual databases. In order to interact and communicate with the data stored in relational database management system, there is a special language called structural query language, which is used to interact with most relational database management system. Microsoft SQL Server has its own implementation of the SQL language, which is called Transact SQL, which is also referred to as T-SQL for short. In this video, I gave you a brief introduction to what SQL Server is. Thank you for watching. Bye for now. Hello and welcome to this video. There are five editions of SQL Server. The five editions of SQL Server are Enterprise, Standard, Web, Developer and Express. I'll start with the Express. The Express is basically the premium edition. This is mainly used in an enterprise environment. It is comprehensive. It has a high end data center. It also has capabilities for having very fast performance, unlimited virtualization, also end to end business intelligence. It enables high service levels for mission critical workloads and end user access to data insights. This is the most complete edition of all of them. To use the enterprise edition, you must purchase a license copy. The next edition is the standard edition. This edition is also licensed. That means you need to purchase a license before you can use this edition. And you can use this for basic data management and business intelligence, which is suitable for small to medium size firms. 
so it enables data management with some slightly minimal IT resources. The next edition is the web edition. This edition is a licensed low cost edition, which is very useful for web hosters to host their web applications. It is scalable, it is affordable, it's manageable and can be used for small to large scale web applications. The next edition is the developer edition. This edition is completely free to use. It has the same features as the enterprise edition. The only difference is that it is licensed as a developer edition. That means you can use it freely, but you cannot use it in a production environment. The developer edition is very useful if you want to see what the enterprise edition looks like, and then you can play around with the developer one. You can also use it to build and test applications. The only difference is you cannot use it in a live production environment, but it's a good choice to experiment for educational purposes and to build and test medium to large scales applications. The final edition is the Express Edition. This edition is completely free to use. It is an entry level free database and it is ideal for learning and for building desktop and small server data driven applications. It is the best choice for independent software vendors, for developers, for hobbyists, if you're building small client applications. However, it is upgradable. So you can have it and also upgrade it to have more advanced database features. The Express Edition is the most basic of all the SQL Server Editions. It is completely free to use in a production environment. So if you have a small application or if you're a small company, that can't afford the standard or the enterprise edition, then you can use the express edition in a production environment. And then if you decide that you want more advanced features, you can then upgrade it to a standard or an enterprise edition. In this video, I introduced you to the various editions of SQL Server. Thank you for watching. Bye for now. Hello and welcome to this video. In this video, I'm going to briefly list the minimum hardware and software requirements that are required to install and run Microsoft SQL Server 2019 on a Windows operating system. Let's take a look at the hardware requirements. Let's start with the hard disk. The minimum size for the hard disk is six gigabyte of disk space. However, the disk space requirements can vary depending on the SQL Server component you're going to install. There are different components. So if you're installing a lot of components, you will require much more than the minimum six gigabytes of hard disk space. The required monitor is Super VGA with a resolution of 800 by 600 or higher. Next is the memory. The minimum required memory is one gigabyte. However, memory of four gigabyte and above is recommended to accommodate the databases. However, there are some SQL Server components that do require a lot of memory apart from the minimum recommended memory type. For example, if you're going to install the data quality server component, that takes about two gigabyte 
of RAM, which is more than the recommended minimum memory. So memory can vary depending on what you are installing. The recommended processor speed is 1.4 gigahertz on a 64-bit processor. However, they have recommended 2.0 gigahertz or faster. The next component is the processor type. So I've listed out the requirements for the processor type here. The key thing to note is that SQL Server only supports 64-bit processor. It no longer supports 86-bit processor. Let's take a look at the software requirements. So software requirements are fairly basic. The software requirements, you should already have that on your system if you've already got a Windows operating system. So the operating system requirements, Windows 10, um, TH1, 1507 or greater, Windows Server 2016 or greater. So make sure you have Windows 10 installed or Windows Server 2016 or greater. The .NET framework, you must have that on your system. So if you've got a Windows 10 operating system installed or a Windows Server 2016 or greater, you should have the .NET framework already installed with it. Also relating to the network software component. If you've also installed the Windows 10 or if you've got Windows Server 2016 or greater, you should have network protocols, shared memory, name pipes, and TCP IP. You should have these pre-installed and available once you have the operating system already installed. In this video, I briefly listed some hardware and software requirements that you need in order to install SQL Server 2019. Thank you for watching. Bye for now. Hello and welcome to this video. This is the official website for SQL Server 2019 download. So there are some options here to try SQL Server on premises or in the cloud. So if you want to try it on premises, this is the trial version. If you want to try it in the cloud, then you have the option to go to Azure. But what we want, we want the developer edition, which is free. There's also an option to download the Express if you wish to do so. Also, if you want to install SQL Server 2019 on Windows, Linux, or Docker containers, it tells you the way to do that here. But we are going for the developer edition. So I'm going to click on this button link to download the setup file for the developer edition. So I'll click on that and that should start downloading. You can see here started downloading the files for the developer setup. This should not take too long. So I'll just give it a few minutes to complete. The download has completed. This is just a partial download. I'm just going to click on this to go to the download location. So I'll click show in folder. And this takes me to my folder where it was downloaded to. So this is what the file looks like. It says SQL2019-SSE1-DEV. You can see the size is not that much. This is just a partial installation. You still have to run this file to download the full installation files. When you download the installation files, it will prompt you for a default location. So I'm going to create a folder here where it's going to download the other components of the SQL Server installation. So I'm going to right click here in my downloads folder, I'll go new, and I'm just going to click on folder. I'm just going to give it a name. I'm going to call it SQL Server Download. So I've created this folder here inside my download file called SQL Server 2019 Download. So now that I have that folder created, I want to run this file that I initially downloaded. So I'll double click to run, and that will start up 
the setup files for the installation. So you can see here it gives you three options. You have the basic, the custom and download media. Download media basically enables you to download the files so that you can later just run it from your computer or any computer you want to run the installation from. I'm going to go for the download media so that I have the option to install it later. It tells me to select the language. I'm going to accept the default package. So you have two options of packages you would like to download, either the ISO or the CAB. So I'm going to leave the default, which is the ISO. I'm going to browse to my downloads folder and just select the folder I created to download it into. So I browse to my downloads folder and this is the folder called SQL Server. I'm just going to click OK. And you can see here on the select download location is now selected the folder I created. So it's going to download it into that. So once that's selected, I'm just going to click download for the download to begin. The download of SQL Server 2019 Developer Edition is now complete. So I'm just going to close this box here. It says, are you sure you want to exit? I'll say yes. I'm going to open up the folder that I downloaded the SQL Server 2019 into. So I double click to open it. You can see here it is a disk image file. So I'm just going to double click to open the content. So these are the content. Hello and welcome to this video. In this video, we are going to install SQL Server 2019 Developer Edition. I'm going to open up the folder that I downloaded the SQL Server 2019 into. So I double click to open it. You can see here it is a disk image file. So I'm just going to double click to open the content. So these are the content. So to begin the installation, I'm just going to double click on this setup file here to run it. And that should start the installation. This is the initial screen you get when you try to install SQL Server. And on the left here, it gives you the different steps that the installation is going to take. So the first step is basically the planning where you just check to make sure that you've got the right hardware and software. If you want to do that, you can just click on this link here to take you to the hardware and software requirements. And there are different documentation as well, security documentation. If you want to read through it, you can. Now there is an important tool here, which is called System Configuration Checker. If you run this tool, it will check to make sure that your system is ready to install SQL Server 2019. So I'm going to click to run this checker and that will quickly run through my system and tell me if my system is ready or not. You can see here it says the operation is completed. I have passed eight. So you ran eight checks and I've passed it. If you want to see the details, just click show details and it will tell you everything it has checked and you can see here the status is passed. I'm just going to click OK to close this. So now I know my system is ready for the installation because I have passed all the hardware and software requirements. Next, I'm going to move on to the installation stage. So I'll click on installation. Inside the installation page, we have the option here to install new SQL Server standalone installation or add features to an existing installation. So if you already have SQL Server installed and you want to add features to the existing installation, you can still use this link. But I am installing a single instance of SQL Server. So I'm going to click on that and that will launch the installation wizard. So this is the installation wizard. The first thing it asks is for a product key. It has detected that I'm running a developer edition, so I don't need a product key. If you were not running 
developer, you will normally have to put in your product key there. So I'm going to accept and click next and that will give me the next screen here. So I'm just going to check this box to accept the license agreement. You can see these are the various steps. I'm on step number two, license terms that I'm going to go through to complete the installation. So I'll click on next and it will do some basic checks. It will install some set of files. So I'll just wait for it to finish. On this step of the installation here, I've had some checks here. It says I've passed three and failed zero. You can see here the one that I have a warning on. So it's just a warning about the firewall. This is not serious. It's not a show stopper. It will not stop the installation from progressing. If you want to see what it says, you can click on the warning thing here and it just tells you what that says. So I'm going to click next to progress to the next stage of the installation. The next step is you are provided with this feature selection so that you select the component you want to install for this instance. In this case, I only want to install the database engine services. So I'm going to check that. That is the only thing I'm going to check. If you look on the right here, it gives you the feature description, tells you what it is, what it does. You can also come back to add features once you've installed SQL Server. And then you have the instance. It tells you this is where it's going to install it in the root of C program files, Microsoft SQL Server. And it tells you this is a shared feature directory. If you, for example, want to install all the features, you can click on this button and that will select all the features. But before you do that, make sure you do have sufficient disk space. So with the database engine services checked, I'm going to click next to progress to the next step of the installation. The next step is to give your instance a name. So this is the instance configuration. The default name for the instance is called MS SQL Server. I'm going to change that. I'm going to give it my own name. I'm going to call it SQL Server 2019. Make sure if you decide to change the default name of the instance, the name you give, make sure there are no spaces. The name you give your instance is also used as the instance ID. So I've given my name instance SQL Server 2019. The instance ID is also going to change to reflect that. All right, you can see it has changed. So I'm going to click next to progress to the next step, which is server configuration. So it's doing the instance configuration now. And once that is done, we've moved on now to the server configuration. So I'm just going to accept all the default that is there and click on next to move to the next step. So I'm going to click next to progress to the next stage. We are now on the database engine configuration page where you have to set the method of authentication to the SQL server. The default is Windows authentication mode, which means whatever way you log into your computer that will be used also to connect to the server. I'm going to select mix mode, which is a mixture of the Windows authentication and a SQL server mode, but you have to provide a password to accommodate the SQL server mode. Once you have entered the password and confirmed the password, you also need to add a user that has administrative rights. So I'm going to click on this button that says add current user. I'll click on that. You can see that has added the username I used to log on to this computer, which is administrator. So once that's been entered and we've entered the password for the SQL Server System Administration account, which is called the SA account, click on next. It then gives you a summary before it actually progresses with the installation. It tells you here, ready to install. You can see here, I've got two more steps. So feel free to read through the summary. 
if there's anything that's not right you can change it before you progress so I'm happy with everything I'm going to click on install it also tells you here the configuration file path so I'm going to click install and that will begin the installation you can see it says installation in progress so I've gone through all the steps I've got just one more step to complete the installation is now complete so you can see here status says succeeded and tells you all the features it has installed so I'm just going to click on this close button here to exit the installation screen and also exit this screen the next thing to do is to check for SQL Server in my programs menu so I'm going to click on start and on the start here there is should be a folder for Microsoft SQL Server you can see here it says new Microsoft SQL Server 2019 if I expand that you can see here it tells me these are all the things it has installed so these tools are quite useful we've got the SQL Server 2019 configuration manager SQL Server 2019 error usage SQL Server 2019 import export SQL Server 2019 installation center so these are very useful tools that will come in handy if you want to perform configuration or import stuff and also add additional features to your installation of SQL Server hello and welcome to this video what is SQL Server Configuration Manager SQL Server Configuration Manager is a tool used to manage services associated with SQL Server it is used to configure the network protocols used by SQL Server it is used to manage the connectivity configuration from SQL Server client computers SQL Server configuration manager is automatically installed when you install SQL Server SQL Server configuration manager allows you the ability to enable or disable a protocol it also gives you the ability to force protocol encryption to access the SQL Server configuration manager you go to your start program and then you locate your SQL Server folder it should be within the SQL Server so my SQL folder is called Microsoft SQL Server 2019 if I expand that we should see the SQL Server 2019 configuration manager so I'm just going to click to launch the SQL Server configuration manager this is what the SQL Server configuration manager looks like so on the left here we've got different tabs if I click on the first tab here that says SQL Server services you can see a list of services that were pre-installed when SQL Server was installed when you install SQL Server it automatically starts the server running so the server will be running waiting for users to start sending commands to the server so you can see the services here SQL Server and then we have SQL Server agent and then SQL Server browser the key component here is SQL Server so you can see here the state is running so that should be set to running the moment you install SQL Server and the start mode is automatic that means it will automatically start running when you SQL Server is installed if for any reason yours is not running all you need to do is right click and there should be an option to start all right if you want to stop the server at any time there is a stop button to stop the server you can also take a look at the properties just by clicking on the properties tab and you can see different things 
relating to the server. Another way to stop the server if you want to do so, on the toolbar here, there is this stop button here. So you can also highlight it and click stop. Or if you want to stop any other services. Currently, the SQL Server agent is stopped and the SQL Server browser is stopped by default. You can see the start mode is manual, which means that you have to manually start the SQL Server agent. There's also a button here to pause the service. So if you want to pause any service that's running, just click on the pause button. That will also pause the service. There's also this option here to restart the service. The service called SQL Server Browser is useful if you have other people trying to connect to your SQL Server remotely. But because I'm not expecting anyone to connect to my SQL Server remotely, I'm going to leave that service stopped. The service called SQL Server Agent, this service is useful for scheduling tasks. For instance, if you want to have a backup of your database created every morning at a certain time or every other day at a certain time, you can schedule that using the SQL Server agent. At the moment, I don't have any agent jobs set up, so I'm going to leave the SQL Server agent currently stopped. If I do have agent jobs active, then I can start the SQL Server agent. The default start mode for SQL Server service here is automatic. What that means, anytime you put your computer on, it will automatically start SQL Server. If you don't want that to be the case, you can change that just by right clicking on this here, go to properties and go to service. And you can see here the start mode says automatic. If you click there, there's other options, disabled or manual. So if you prefer to start it manually, you can do so. Let's take a look at the other tabs here. So we've got one that says SQL Server Network Configuration. It says there are no items to show in this view. We click on the next one. And you can see we've got client protocols and aliases. So we can right click, open. We can see the client protocols here, the names here and the order and it tells you they are enabled. So if we click on the alias tab, there is no items to show in this view. If we move on to the next tab, SQL Server Network Configuration. So this is the protocols for the instance of the SQL Server. So if I right click, open, you can see the protocols here. This is enabled, name pipes, disabled, TCIP, disabled. TCP IP is, has to be enabled if you're in a production environment, in a network environment. So I'm not in a network environment, so it's okay for my TCP IP to be disabled. If I was in a network environment where the resources are shared from other clients, then this should be enabled. To enable a protocol is fairly easy. You just right click and there's a tab here to just enable it. You can also look at the properties of the protocol. So if I right click and go properties, you can see the property page. If I click on that, it gives you more information about the protocol. Let's move on to the final tab, which is the SQL native client. Again, we have protocols and aliases. If you want to see the protocols, right click, and then you can see the protocols it also tells you if they are enabled or disabled. If for any reason your server is not running, this is a good place to come and check just by clicking on the SQL Server Services and just to check the state if your server is running or not. It's also the place you come to if you want to enable or disable a protocol. So that is it for this video on SQL Server Configuration Manager. Thank you for watching. Bye for now. Hello and welcome to this video. What 
is SQL Server Management Studio. SQL Server Management Studio is also referred to as SSMS. SQL Server Management Studio is an integrated development environment which provides a graphical interface for connecting and working with Microsoft SQL Server. SQL Server Management Studio is a free tool provided by Microsoft to manage SQL servers. SQL Server Management Studio is used by professional developers and database administrators to manage and administer SQL servers. SQL Server Management Studio can be used to access, to configure, to manage, to administer and develop all components of SQL Server. Let's go ahead and download and then install SQL Server Management Studio. To download SQL Server Management Studio, we're going to go to our Programs menu and look for the SQL Server 2019 folder. And inside that folder, we should have a tool. So we've got Microsoft SQL Server 2019. I'm going to expand that. And we have this tool here that says SQL Server 2019 Installation Center. So if I click on that, it will launch the installation screen. And then from there, we can download the SQL Server Management Studio. So this is the SQL Server Installation Center, which allows you to add components to a previously installed SQL Server instance. So I'm going to click on this installation tab here and in, within the installation tab, I'm going to click on the option that says install SQL Server Management Tools. So if I click on this, it's going to take me to the download page where I can download it. So I'm going to click on that and that will take me to the site that will enable me to download the SQL Server Management Studio. So it's trying to launch the site. So this is where it's going to take you. So I'm just going to scroll down and you can see here there is a download link to download SQL Server Management Studio. It tells you the release number, the build number, release date. So I'm going to click to begin the download. You can see here the download has started here. So I'm just going to wait for it to complete and then I will run the installation files. The download has completed. So this is the downloaded file. So I'm just going to click to show in folder and that would take me to the location where it's downloaded. It. This is the location where the SQL Server Management Studio setup file was downloaded to. So I'm just going to double click on it to start to install it. So I'll double click and that should bring up the installation page. So I'll give it a few minutes to load that page. So you can see here it's loaded the page and tells me the location. This is where it's going to install it. And there is an option to change the location if you're not happy with it. But I would recommend you accept the default location and then just click on this option to install. So I'll click on the install button to progress the installation. The time it takes to install depends on your processing speed for your computer. The setup has completed for the Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio. So I'm just going to click on the close button to exit. So if we go back into the start menu and locate the SQL Server folder, Mine is called SQL Server 2019. So this is the folder. If I expand this, I should see a new component. You can see here, it says Microsoft 
SQL Server tools. If I expand that, we should see different tools that the SQL Server tools installed. Analysis Services Deployment, Database Engine Tuning, and this is the Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio. So if we want to interact with the SQL Server and log into it, we'll use the Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio. So that is it for this video. We successfully downloaded and installed Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio. Hello and welcome to this video. In this video, I'll be connecting to an SQL Server instance. To begin, I'm going to start up the SQL Server Management Studio. So I'll click on my Start menu and then locate the SQL Server Management Studio, which is located in this folder called Microsoft SQL Server Tools 18. I'm going to expand that and select the Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio. The first time you run SQL Server Management Studio, the Connect to Server window opens up. If this window does not open up automatically, you can also launch it manually. So let me show you. I'm just going to cancel out of it. So if the window doesn't automatically show up from within the Object Explorer, you can click on the option to connect and select Database Engine and that will pop open the window. In the Connect to Server window, the name of your server instance should be populated. If it is not populated, you can click on the drop down and then within the Browse option, you can click on Database Engine and you can select the name from there. For the authentication, make sure that Windows Authentication is selected and then click on the Connect button. To verify that your SQL Server connection succeeded, just expand and explore the objects inside the Object Explorer. So I'm just going to click on the plus sign and that will expand. So if I want to see the databases I have, I click on the plus next to the databases. So the fact that I can see all these objects indicates that my connection to the server was successful. To disconnect from the SQL Server, you just right click on the name of the server, just click disconnect and to exit Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio, you click on the file option and then click on the option to exit. Hello and welcome to this video. In this video, you'll learn how to install the AdventureWorks sample database. AdventureWorks is a fictional company that Microsoft uses in its documentation for demonstrations. The link to download the sample database is displayed on the screen. This is the GitHub repository where the AdventureWorks sample databases are stored. So I'm just going to scroll down to see the one I want. So this is AdventureWorks full database backup and there are different types. The one I want to download is this one called AdventureWorks 2016.bak. .bak basically means it's a backup file. Also notice in parentheses, we've got OLTP. OLTP basically stands for Online Transaction Processing. So I'm going to click on the link for the AdventureWorks 2016.bak. I'll click on that and that should download the file. You can see the file being downloaded to my download location. Sometimes Microsoft moves things around just in case when you view this video, if this link or the files are no longer in this location, I'm going to have a copy of this backup I've just downloaded for you to download just in case it's no longer available or the link has been moved. The backup has completed, so I'm going to click on it 
to show in folder and that will take me to the location of the backup download. This is the file that was downloaded and that is the size. In order to install this sample database inside my SQL server, I will have to restore it from this backup here. SQL Server looks for backup files in a specific location. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to relocate this file from the download location into the folder that SQL Server will go to, to look for a backup file. So I'm going to right click and click on cut to relocate this file. So let's go to the location where SQL Server looks for backup files. I'm going to open up my C drive and under my C drive, we've got the program files. I'll click on program files and look for a Microsoft SQL folder, which is this one here. And then I'll look for the instance of my SQL Server, which is this one called SQL Server 2019. I'm going to click on that. Inside that, I'll click on this folder that says MS SQL. And inside that there is a backup folder. So I'll click on backup, I right click and I'll paste it there. So I've now relocated the file I downloaded. I have now logged into my SQL server. So in order to install that database file I downloaded, I need to right click on my databases folder. So right click and there is an option to restore database. So I'm going to click on that. We wait for the window to open. So here we have to specify where we are going to restore the database from. It's going to be from a device. So I click on the device option and this button here that's got several dots. I'm going to click on this in order to go to the location where the backup file is. Under the backup media type, make sure you have the file selected. If I click on the drop down, there are other options. We've got the URL. So make sure yours is on file and then click on the add button. When you click on the add button, SQL Server knows where to go to for any backup file. You can see it has automatically gone to the location of the SQL Server. You can see the path here. It says SQL Server 2019, which is the name of my SQL Server instance. So I'm going to select the name of the file that I want to restore from backup. So that's the name of the file. The file name is populated here and I just need to click on the OK button. So I click OK and then it tells me the path. This is the full path to where the backup file is. Next, I'll press the OK button and you can see we've got this option checked to make sure we're going to restore this database from full backup. Next, click on the OK button and you can see the backup is being restored there. So we'll give it a few minutes to complete and we should get a message to say that the backup has completed. You can see here the message has popped up saying database adventure works 2016 restored successfully. So I click OK. So if we take a look at my databases folder, you can see this database here I've just restored the adventure works 2016. If I expand that, you will see all the tables that that database has. You see it got lots of tables. So that's it for this video. In this video, I showed you how to install the AdventureWorks 2016 database. Thank you for watching. Bye for now. Hello and welcome to this video. In this video, you'll learn how to install the AdventureWorks DW sample database. DW stands for Data Warehouse. AdventureWorks is a fictional company that Microsoft uses in its documentation for demonstrations. 
the link to download the AdventureWorks DW sample database is displayed on the screen. This is the GitHub repository. This is the location where Microsoft stores the sample databases for AdventureWorks. So I'm going to scroll down to the database I want and we've got different database types. The one I want is the AdventureWorks DW. DW stands for Data Warehouse and I want the full backup. The AdventureWorks Data Warehouse database I want to download is this one here, AdventureWorks DW2016.bak. .bak basically means it's a backup file. So I'm going to click on the link to begin the download. And you can see the download has started here on the bottom left hand corner. It should not take too long, so I'll give it a few minutes to complete. The download has completed. I'm going to click to show in folder and that will take me to the folder where the download file was downloaded to. So I'll click on show in folder and this is the downloaded file. In order to get this database into our SQL server, we're going to have to restore it from this backup file. But we have to relocate it because SQL server looks for backup files in a specific location. So I'm going to right click on the file and select cut. And then I'm going to go to my drive to go to the location where Microsoft SQL Server looks for backup. I need to go to my C drive. So I click on the C drive and then go into my program files folder. Within my programs file folder, there should be an SQL Server. So this Microsoft SQL Server folder, I'm going to click on it and then I will look for my instance of SQL Server. So my instance of SQL Server is called SQL Server 2019. I'm going to click into that folder and then click into this MS SQL folder. Here we have a backup folder. So I'm going to click to go inside this backup folder and then right click and paste in the AdventureWorks DW file I downloaded. So I have now relocated the downloaded file into the backup folder where Microsoft SQL Server will go to to look for backup files. I have logged into SQL Server. To install the AdventureWorks DW database, I need to restore it from backup. So I'm going to right click on the databases folder and select restore database. And then within the restore database box here, I need to choose device and then select this button here that has three dots. And this will make me choose where the backup file is located. So the default here is file. If I click on the drop down, there's another option called URL, but make sure yours is set to file. So we then click on this add button and then SQL Server immediately goes to the backup location and then we'll select the file, which is this one. And it populates the name of the file here. We click on the OK button we have the full path of the file here. We click on the OK button again. And then here we have the option checked for restore. So make sure that option is checked. And then we click on OK. And that will begin restoring the database. So it's actually restoring it now. When it's done, we should get a message. The message has popped up saying the database adventure works DW 2016 has been restored successfully. So I'll click on the OK button and that will exit that screen. And if we look here on the list of databases, we've got the AdventureWorks DW 2016. If I expand the database and then expand to look into the tables, 
you can see we've got lots of tables available inside that database. So that is it for this video. In this video, I showed you how to install the AdventureWorks DW2016 sample database. Thank you for watching. Bye for now. Hello and welcome to this video. In this video, we are going to install the Wide World Importers sample database. The Wide World Importers is a fictional company that Microsoft uses in its documentation for demonstrations. The link to download the database is displayed on the screen. This is the GitHub repository where Microsoft stores sample databases. So I'm going to scroll down here on the SQL Server sample repository. I'm going to click on the link for Wild World Importers sample database version 1.0. I'll click on that and that will take me to this page. And I'm going to click on this link here that says Wild World Importers full backup. So I click on that and that will begin the download. So you can see the download has started. It's downloading the full backup of the database called Wild World Importers. So we'll give that a few minutes to complete. The file download has completed. So I'm going to click on this to go to show in folder and that will take me to the location where the file was downloaded to. So this is the file. Microsoft SQL Server looks for backup files in a specific location. For me to install a copy of this database inside SQL Server, I need to relocate this file, which is a backup file, into the directory where Microsoft SQL Server looks for backup files. So I'm going to right click and select cut. And then I go to my computer. I go to my C drive and inside my C drive, I go to program files. So I'll open up that folder and there should be a Microsoft SQL Server folder. So I click on it and inside there, I look for my instance of SQL Server. My own instance is called SQL Server 2019. I'll double click to open it. And then I'll double click to open this folder called MSQL. And there is a backup folder. I'll click to open and then I right click and paste. So I've now relocated the file I downloaded into this backup directory where Microsoft SQL Server will go to to look for any backup files. I have logged into my SQL Server. To install the sample database I've just downloaded, I need to restore it from backup. So I'm going to click on my databases folder. I'll right click, select restore database, and that will open up this window. I'm going to select the option for device, and then select this button here with these dots and that will give me this option. So I need to click on this add button and that will take me to the location of the backup file. So I click add and that takes me to the location where Microsoft SQL Server looks for backup files. So I'm going to select the file I want to restore, pops the file name in here. I'm going to click OK and it gives me the full path of the backup media and I'm going to click this OK button. And it also tells me here that it's going to restore this file from backup. So make sure the checkbox for restore is checked and then click on OK. You can see the backup has started. We give it a few minutes to complete and it should pop up with a message when it has completed the backup restore. It shows you the progress on the bottom here and you can also monitor the bar here. You can see it has completed. It says the database 
Wild World Importers has been restored successfully. So I'm going to click OK and that exit the box. So you can see here under my databases, I've got a new database called Wild World Importers. If I expand the database and expand the tables, we can see all the tables available inside this new database I have imported. In this video, I showed you how to install the Wild World Importers database. Thank you for watching. Bye for now. Hello and welcome to this video. In this video, you will learn how to install the Wild World Importers DW Sample Database. DW stands for Data Warehouse. Wild World Importers is a fictional company that Microsoft uses in its documentation for demonstrations. The link to download the database is displayed on the screen. This is the GitHub repository where Microsoft stores the sample database. I'm just going to scroll down and inside the repository, I'm going to click on the link for Wild World Importers Sample Database. And that will take me to another page. And I'm going to click on the Wild World Importers DW Full Backup. To begin the download for the Worldwide Importers DW, I just click on the link here and that will start the download. You can see the download has started. The file download has completed. So I'm going to click on this to go to show in folder and that will take me to the location where the file was downloaded to. Microsoft SQL Server looks for backup files in a specific location. For me to install a copy of this database inside SQL Server, I need to relocate this file, which is a backup file, into the directory where Microsoft SQL Server looks for backup files. So I'm going to right click and select cut, and then I go to my computer, I go to my C drive and inside my C drive, I go to program files. I'll open up that folder and there should be a Microsoft SQL Server folder. So I click on it and inside there, I look for my instance of SQL Server. My own instance is called SQL Server 2019. I'll double click to open it and then I'll double click to open this folder called MSQL and there is a backup folder. I'll click to open and then I right click and paste. So I've now relocated the file I downloaded into this backup directory. This is where Microsoft will look for any backup files. I have logged into SQL Server. In order to install the sample database I downloaded, I need to restore it from backup. So I'm going to click on the databases folder. I'll right click and select restore database. That will give me this interface. I'm going to select the option for device and click on this box here with three dots. And that takes me to where I can add the location of the backup downloaded file. So on that backup media type, the default is file. If I click on the drop down, you also have URL, but I'm going to leave it on file, click on add, and that will automatically detect the location where I downloaded it to. 
this automatically goes to the location where SQL Server looks for backup files. So I'm going to select the name of the file and the name also gets populated in here. I'm going to click OK and the backup media which contains the path of the backup file gets displayed here and then I click on the OK button and here we have the checkbox for restore. Make sure that is checked so that it restores from the backup and then I'll click OK and you can see the backup has started. You can also check the progress on this bottom left here. Once it's finished, you should get a message saying that the backup has been restored. Once the backup is completed, you get a pop-up message saying database Wild World Importers DW has been restored successfully. So I'm going to click on OK and that will exit that box. And you can see here on that databases, we've got the name of the database we've just installed called Wild World Importers DW. If I expand the database, I can take a look at the tables. I'm going to expand the tables and we can see a list of tables that that database contains. So that is it. In this video, I showed you how to install the Wild World Importers DW sample database. Thank you for watching. Bye for now. Hello and welcome to this video. In this video, I'm going to introduce you to Microsoft SQL Server data files. All databases created inside Microsoft SQL Server consist of two data files. The first is called an MDF data file. MDF stands for Master Database File. This is the primary data file which consists of the actual data contained inside that database. The second type of data file is called an LDF, which stands for log data file. This contains all the transactional logs for all the activities that took place within the master database file. This is my SQL Server. And if I click on the database tab, you can see I have several databases here listed. I also have some system databases. The system databases are the databases that SQL Server uses itself to function. So I'm going to take you to the location where the data files are stored. I'm going to show you where the data files are stored. So I go into my C drive, I go into my program files, and there should be an SQL Server, Microsoft SQL Server folder. I'll click on that. And within that, there should be the instance of my SQL Server. Mine is called SQL Server 2019. So I'm going to click on that folder and then click on the MSQL folder. And then there is a data folder. So that's where the file should be. So I click on data. You can see each of the databases has two sets of files. For example, this one here called AdventureWorks underscore data. If I right click and go properties, you can see here it says MDF file. It also tells you the size. And if I click on the next one and right click properties, you can see it's got a dot LDF. So each database has two types of files, a data file, which is a dot MDF file and a log file which has a .ldf file extension. The actual data for the database is always located in the data file, which is the MDF file, and then the transactional logs, which contains all the activities that took place on the 
master data file is contained in the log file, which is the .ldf file extension. In this video, I introduced you to the two types of data files that SQL Server databases contain. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.